boom. Hello. <laughs> we are hopefully live and uh, Kenton Hansen, my regular companion is with me, but we also have a brand new friend today. Hello, James. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm James Intercasso. I'm a game designer, podcaster, and blogger, and I worked with Roll20 as one of the lead designers of the Burn Bright Science Fantasy role-playing game that uh, Roll20 just put out a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Yeah, I am midway into, well, I'm a couple sessions into a staff game of that where I'm playing, and you may nice. have to stop me from talking excitedly about my character as we go into this, but... It is very exciting. There are lots of cool uh, character types that you can design around. You can design a cool idea around, and I love that. So, thank you, James, for joining us. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm really excited to be here. This is great. Yeah. All Glad right. to have you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, welcome everyone. I know that, um, <laughs> actually we have our first question for you, James. It's, uh, from TK has joined the fray. Oh boy. Uh, our very own TK asks, James, mm -hmm. the people want to know how many ships can we smooch? <laughs> uh, so all of the ships are, are smoochable, uh, provided, provided the ship wants to smooch you um so that is that is uh, the the ships are all bonded uh, to a magical intelligence uh which is like a sapient uh, sort of being uh, in burn bright so yes you can fall in love with uh or or just be attracted to your spaceship mm -hmm. um you and, know, it can, uh, and it can feel back that's right that's right yeah, it can it can it can feel back. So that's why we encourage uh, consensual relationships uh, with your spaceship uh, <laughs> romance. Can we get? Can we please get a box quote of that? <laughs> that's why we encourage consensual relationships with your space with your spaceship, James Intercasso mm -hmm. designer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. So yes. Uh, so all of the spaceships uh, provided. TK, you are smooth enough to uh, to that's seduce so all of the spaceships. So that's what it's going to take. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so with that, welcome to the Roll20 Roundtable, a perfectly ordinary thing where people act very normally and professionally. Um, <laughs> uh, I am one of your usual hosts. My name is Surya Ian Haji. I am the Director of Communications at Roll20 and my co-host on this side. Ta-da! Mirror camera. Uh, <laughs> can I'm you uh, Kenton Hanson, uh, Director of Product at Roll20 mm. and uh, co-host of the Roll20 Roundtable, yes, which indeed. is my real job. Everything else is just pretend. Yeah, everything else is just pretend. That's all we do. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we are going to do the usual Roll20 Roundtable stuff, which is we're going to talk about some Roll20 updates, talk about a little thing called Burn Bright that just came up. Uh, we'll go through some pre-submitted questions that people asked, and then we will also answer chat questions at the end. So please, if you're in chat today, please begin asking those questions. Our mods will collect them. Um, and uh, we will try to answer every question, but we will be wrapping up on the hour. James will be joining us for the entire panel, so you are encouraged to ask Burn Bright questions for the entire hour. Or other questions, right? Like, or we other can ask questions. James anything. You could ask James <laughs> literally anything. Actually, that's oh, not boy. true. There are <laughs> safety ratings in place. <laughs> but you can, you can ask James off-the-wall questions, and he's stuck here for an hour, so he'll probably have to answer. It's true. It's true. <laughs> um, also, during this hour, we are, well, Roll20 in general is raising funds on Tiltify um, for uh, Code 2040. Uh, last month, gosh, time flies. Last month, we talked to um, someone from Roll2040. We talked to Daniel Owens, the VP of Programs, uh, about what that program is, and we are still raising funds for them. For every $100 raised during the stream, we will give away a copy of Burn Bright, and we will draw winners uh, 10 minutes before the end of the hour. So you got about... 45 minutes. Uh, and additionally, for every dollar that's donated to Code 2040, uh, Roll20 is donating a dollar as well. Yes, that is important. Yeah. Thank you for at, for reminding us of that. Um, so yeah, uh, please donate. They have a, a fantastic program at uh, 2040. Um, so 
yeah, uh, like I said, we talked to Danielle Owens, their VP of programs last month, uh, and um, got to hear about some of the stuff that they are doing in terms of helping to diversify the industry by giving people uh, supported paths to getting jobs, um, doing uh, technology. Uh, so technologists uh, working in games and tech generally in all of these areas. It's a really important program that understands the, the, the need to support those folks, not just to get them in the pipeline, but to actually support them with mentorship and continued opportunities and the ability to give feedback uh, with the companies that they're talking to uh, in a safe way that allows those companies to improve as well. So very good work that they're doing. Please uh, help us raise money for them. And with that, Let's move on into the rest of the roundtable. Um, last time we also demoed some shiny dynamic lighting updates. There were folder questions. There were probably dogs. There's usually dogs. <laughs> um, and you can check out the previous roundtable on our YouTube. This one will be uploaded there as well. So some of you may be watching this on YouTube later. Hi, YouTube watchers. Um, speaking of dynamic lighting though, uh, Kenton, I think that we've had some new dynamic lighting stuff and I know that we're going to have a question from one of our pre-submitted questions that asks for more detail, but can you give us kind of an overview of what's going on with updated dynamic lighting right now? Sure. Uh, as uh, Surya mentioned last week or last month, goodness, we yeah. uh, demoed uh, night vision and the color changes there. Um, we are working on, uh, we've released uh, API support for uh, directional light and directional vision, um, which is uh, another big thing. So if you're a pro user, you can uh, hop on over into the API and pull um, a lot of things. I know the Aaron was excited to see that uh, as uh, he often is. Um, we also what does that have. Mean in, in practical terms for those who might be not be as familiar with API. Yeah, no. Um, so imagine it like a plugin, right? Like you can you can make a browser plugin or, or, a, or an app for uh, for your phone. That sounds um, uh, you can silly be when I say it on that. OK, <laughs> great. Um, but uh, you, you can you can build into the Roll20 virtual tabletop um, automation and things that make it work uh, automatically or, or differently or, or better. Um, so uh, with, with this, we've given the ability for people to uh, create a, a cr create a plugin or create their own plugin to change the um, uh, field of vision of, of a token um, or uh, change the light, uh, the way that light sheds uh, to limit it to a certain radius. So if you have like a flashlight in uh, Call of Cthulhu or you have a bullseye lantern in a fantasy game, um, all of those things are uh, possible to make that more immersive and also to make that more um, automated as well. So you, you don't, you as a GM, when you're running the game, you don't have to like hop in and uh, change a whole bunch of token settings, you can run a command and it uh, just takes care of that for you. Um, or, or it sets up all the tokens in the way that you want, or uh, the possibilities are limitless. And I'm always amazed to see what the uh, API uh, community is uh, pumping out and, and creating. The Aaron, if you're listening, I want a glow in the dark dog now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am very much the embodiment of give a mouse a cookie. Uh, mentality because Aaron one time made me a, a script during the course of a round table to have like a little pet companion and now I'm like constantly asking for more. Um, so yeah, a dog that glows in the dark, please. Um, yeah, so uh, we also... Oh, additionally, the lighting multiplier. Um, yeah. uh, oh, sorry. We, I, you had more. Yeah, no, I, we, well, I got so involved in everything I almost forgot to do, um, which is especially um, uh, comes up a lot in like Pathfinder games and, and other games where uh, certain um, kinds of characters, uh, certain character builds have different ways to interact with light. Um, I'm really proud of the work that we did on this. Um, there's not a... Uh, there's not a perfect way to do it really well because it can be done in almost any way in the in, a, uh, in, in the uh, mind's eye in your imagination and uh, translating that into something that shows up on a computer screen is something that uh, requires uh, a lot of translation and that translation was done really well. I'm glad that it's there and, and that it's working uh, as good as it is. So awesome, go team! Um, yeah, so we'll we'll go into some of them a little bit more detail about those later. But like that's the the broad overview, and there's a lot of exciting stuff. Um, we got a ton of projects more on the way coming. too. Yes, more yeah. on the way. Uh, we also put out our release notes at least once a week, so you can keep yourself informed on changes in progress. Um, our moderators will drop that link in the chat for you. Yeah. Um, 
So speaking of, you know, putting out exciting new things, Burn Bright <laughs> released and is awesome <laughs> and shiny. And I personally am playing a shape changing a uh, Sundance kid who stores a pistol inside their body uh, because that is the kind of thing you can do. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's such a cool character. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited about Burn Bright, right? It was, it's been over three years uh, in the making uh, oh, gosh, with Roll20. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the fact that it's finally here um and and being enjoyed by a lot of different people is really really exciting. Uh right, it's a, a science fantasy RPG um and uh, and it it's been optimized for Roll20, right? Roll20 is the publisher, uh the the producer of this uh, game and so it is really exciting because it is like the first time uh that a game has been released on Roll20 for Roll20, right? Like mm -hmm. exclusively for the platform, built with the platform in mind. Um, so that is one of the things that is really exciting about it. Uh, and it is a science fantasy game. It takes place in this universe where the universe is shrinking. Um, it's uh, this galaxy is surrounded by a phenomenon called the burn. And it's like a slow reverse big bang, right? It is slowly closing in. And this burn has this like orange borealis effect. And as it touches planets and spaceships and moons and people, they disappear and are never seen or heard from again once the burn overtakes them. Uh, so, uh, and then you play uh, characters, alien characters in the burn. So it's very exciting. Uh, you play a uh, Sundance kid. Exactly, exactly. Yes, <laughs> and you can keep a laser in your bees. body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and that's the big thing is there are no humans in Burn Bright. Um, there are eight different playable species, and each one of them is unique in the sense that their like anatomy and physiology basically gives them superpowers. Mm -hmm. um, and as you advance, those superpowers help you uh, become uh, very powerful and and help you save people. Burn Bright is a game about in the face of the impossible in the face of overwhelming odds and and despair um choosing to be hopeful and choosing to be a good person uh, because it is the right thing to do um like basically we're saying like hey the end of the world the end of existence is no reason to become a jerk mm -hmm. um and and there are a lot of people becoming jerks in burn bright but uh the assumption is that the player characters are not doing that. which is refreshing i mean there have been so many like near apocalyptic post-apocalyptic various stories about like well when things get bad everyone turns on each other and you know that's a mood that's a valid mood but mm -hmm. it's nice to have one where like things are getting bad but people are choosing to still work together um and you get to play one of these folks that is uh finding ways to make it work for them within this shrinking universe Yes, exactly, exactly. And so and and that's the uh that's sort of the the crux, right? There are you know, there's greedy corporations profiting off panic. There are people who have nowhere to turn because their planet has been destroyed and they got to find a port that will take them. There's resources disappearing. There's, you know, um it feels uh, sort of apropos for the time we're living in <laughs> oh, right <gosh>. now. Um, <laughs> uh, we did not, we had no idea, obviously, three years ago when I don't we know, started. James, I feel like you've got kind of like an, like an oracular ball because didn't no, you also even, create. Let's not like... even dive into that. Uh, okay, yeah, let's not. You're no. right, you're right. Let's not. Everything's fine. We're all good and happy. <laughs> One thing that I really like about the, the game and the system as a whole is. Um, the limits that other game systems put on on players, uh, it, like, this whole system flies in the face of that in a lot of way. Like, there's not limits on actions during a turn, right? You can keep taking actions, and um, so uh, you know, I, I as a player get to dis decide, you know, how far am I going to push this, and um, that that's one of the most fun things for me about the entire thing. That I never know what my my other players are going to do or what i might do when it comes up to my turn in, in that way yeah yeah james can you talk us through because i this is this is a mechanic that i think is is really fun and really interesting and y'all i remember i know we have questions and we will get to them but since we have james here i feel like i would be remiss in not 
uh, talking about all the cool things about Burn Bright, and there's a lot of cool things. So can you talk to us about like complexity roles and like how what Kenton is talking about, about how you can push a little further and a little further with your turn? Oh yeah, sure. So when you burn bright is a skill based game, you have a, a bunch of skills, 18. Um, so kind of like fate, uh, which is skill based game. If anybody is familiar with that or Zweihander, which I know just came out on roll 20. Um, so, uh, so those are skill based games where everything you do is like a skill roll and you go to see if you succeed. So each skill that you have has a die rating. Uh, it's either D4, D6, D8, D10, or D12. The bigger the die, the more sides the die has, the better you are with that skill. And then when you make a skill roll, there's a complexity. Uh, and that complexity is usually a number between two and four, but it can go as high as seven. Um, and you roll... When you, when you make a skill check with a skill, you roll that many dice of the complexity, right? So if you have a complexity three task and you have a D8 in your skill, you roll three D8. And then if any matches come up, you fail. Uh, and if not, if you don't match any numbers, right? If you roll a, a one, a three, and a five, you're good. If you roll two threes and a one, well, then you failed. And when you fail in Burn Bright, you don't just fail to do the thing you set out to do. You make things worse for you and your party, right? You break a piece of equipment, you uh, hurt yourself, you make someone mad, um, many, many different consequences. In combat, your first action starts at a complexity of two, uh, and then every action you take after that uh, increases the complexity by one. So there's this push your luck mechanic of like, do I wanna go for more? Uh, because eventually you will fail, and when you fail, things will be worse for you <laughs> and for your team. Um, and so there's that idea of like, how far do I want to push this? Um, what's going to happen? And like, oh, now I've, uh, you know, created a breach in our spaceship and everybody is being sucked out through the airlock now uh, <laughs> because I, I decided to, you know, swing my laser sword around wildly one too many times. Yeah. Um, so that's how that works. And on the upside, if you do pull it off, you can pull off some really cool stuff. You can do like three, four actions in a turn if you're very, very lucky. <laughs> and so like shoot one guy, uh, turn around, like support your ally and then turn back around, attack another guy. Like, you know, it's it's just it's fun to, to raise the stakes to the degree that you feel like raising them and sometimes to raise them and then... Roll regret match. those decisions yeah yeah <laughs> yeah well, and, and i think what is great is uh you know somebody said this the other day uh in a in a un burn bright discord that has been set up um they said i like failing as much as i like succeeding and i thought that is the biggest compliment uh we could get as game designers for this game is that people get as much um you know as much entertainment out of failing, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not as much joy, but as much like, oh, when they <laughs> fail, they do when they succeed. So that's good. Yeah. In in chat, one of uh, randomly generated is one of the people who is in my game and reassures me, no scope, which is my character's name, uh, will get to shoot many people someday. I had very, <laughs> very bad luck in our first combat. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> uh, there are lots of other interesting things that I would love to talk you about, talk to you about with Burn Bright, and we will while we're here. But uh, in the interest of getting us a little closer to questions, I'm going to move us along, and we'll circle back to some Burn Bright stuff too while you're here. Um, so uh, for uh, other products on the marketplace, because there have been plenty, um, we you can check them out in our weekly roundup. I'm also going to show y'all. Here's a little preview of some of the things that have come out recently. Tales from the Loop, uh, Monster of the Week Mystery Bundle, that's by Evil Hat, um, Lighting, Glows, and Windows by, Bass, by Brass Badger Workshop, and Midnight Sub Rosa by Pelgrain Press. Uh, as a, a Roman history nerd, and uh, James and I were geeking out about Roman history right before we started the stream, <laughs> uh, Sub Rosa, let, let, let me put on the historian narrator voice. Sub Rosa is a phrase that they used in Rome to indicate like things done in secret with the idea being that if you put like a rose above the um, doorframe or something that indicates that like what goes, what happens beyond this doorframe isn't to be spoken of outside of it. So I'm, I'm just very nerdily excited to see someone picking up on the, the Sub Rosa phrase and using it 
um, in tabletop games, more nerdy uh, classic stuff or history stuff, please. Um, so yeah, we have a lot coming up in the up. We have a lot in the upcoming weeks, uh, so keep an eye on Twitter and, like I said, on the blog so you don't miss any of it. We do the uh, roundups on Thursdays, I believe, for all of the um, round for all of the marketplace products. Uh, we also have a number of live streams going on right now. Um, Lost Mine of Fandelver is going strong against skeletons, spooders, and they may eventually wind up dealing with a dragon. Who's to say? <laughs> um, they they go live Mondays at 1 p.m. Pacific, uh, and the videos and podcast link you can find an, on YouTube. Uh, our mods are going to drop a link in the chat. Uh, we also have Indoor Recess. Uh, they bring Theris to life like no one else. They also bring Centaur Body Horror to life like no one else. So um, I, I've suffered through that, and I think you should as well. Centaur Body Horror. Watch Indoor Recess. <laughs> Um, I've never considered how a centaur would ride a horse as much as I have. And the <laughs> latest one is a centauripede, I believe. <laughs> they just don't stop. They just don't stop. <laughs> um, they're live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Pacific on the D&D Twitch channel. Uh, and we also have uh, videos on YouTube. Um, Indie Showcase is a more recently started show that is going through a number of independent TTRPGs and touring them, often alongside the designer. They have so far battled zombies in Zombie World, dealt with the fall of magic, and next week they will be playing Glitter Hearts. Uh, each episode showcases different creators within the tabletop community, as well as a designer from the game they're playing. And those air weekly on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific. So basically just set your Tuesday aside and watch all of these amazing shows. And then the uh, last one on my list is Burn Bright. <laughs> um, this is the first actual play for Burn Bright. Uh, it is Thursdays at 7 p.m. Pacific. It is a perfect way to get a look at the system with an amazing cast. And do keep a lookout because there are more live streams coming shortly, including one by one of our spotlight groups, Salty Sweet, Sweet Games, who are planning to start in early August. And I do know that there are there are folks playing Burn Bright around the around the Twitch world, so keep an eye out for that definitely check it out we have uh as a way to give soraya's voice a break i'll jump <laughs> in real quick and say that uh, we have one more announcement before we get into questions so if you're here watching and uh are ready to uh ask away go ahead and throw your question into chat uh moderators moderators will take care of it make sure that we we get it and we'll be able to uh get you an answer we are uh gonna uh head off right at the top of, uh, of uh, the hour at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific, uh, which is a different time for me because I exist in between times. Uh, but yeah, Gen Con is happening online this year, um, July 30th through August 2nd with three Roll20 events. Surya, why don't you tell us about some of those? Sure. Well, we have a Burn Bright Burning Daylight live stream. It is actually the same live stream I was just talking about. It is officially a Gen Con event. And so you can watch it, like I said, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Um, hopefully join in and meet a lot of folks who also wish that they could be physically at Gen Con, but are enjoying having the opportunity to see a cool stream from home. Uh, there will also be a Burn Bright discussion, which uh, James will be uh, joining some of this, the cast there to chat about their adventure in the system on Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, and uh, we also have another one called Virtual GMing on Roll20. We gathered a group of professional and just awesome GMs to talk about GMing for a virtual table and share their experiences, which we think will be a really great and useful time for people new to Roll20 and virtual TTRPGs, as well as for veterans. You can pick up some new tips from these folks. And that one will be Saturday at 12 p.m. Pacific. All of these will be live streamed on Twitch, but you can sign up and get other cool con access through Gen Con's website. So we'll drop that link in chat as well. All right. Question time. Question time. Boop. Welcome to a new world of questions. And starting with this one by Masters8 or MasterS8, uh, will there ever be integration with D&D Beyond? 
Uh, D&D Beyond and Roll20 sell very different versions of D&D products. And so integration is is a little bit um, of an interesting question. Uh, we don't have any plans for integration at this time. And um, that's about uh, that's about the answer I can give right now. Okay. Well, fine. Then I, I will ask you a different integration question from okay. Bryn. Will we ever see Discord integration into Roll20? Uh, my friend Bryn. Um, yeah, I actually don't know Bryn, or I might. I have no idea. But um, <laughs> anyone who asks a question, give me something to talk about as a friend. Um, we have had conversations with Discord in the past about integration, and um, that uh, their um, their roadmap is uh, different than ours, or different than what um, what we need from them, or they need from us. Um, and we haven't found a really good way to work together yet. They do have a public um, API that we've looked into, but it doesn't really support the the kind of thing that we need to do because we're a browser-based um, software and, mm. and most of their integrations are built for um, the desktop app e executables that are yeah. that are running on a system. And then, yeah, we run into several different issues with that. But um, you, uh, we, you know, I, I was, uh, I have been called Mr. Silver Linings before, and so I'll say that uh, with Discord, you can always throw a link right into your Roll20 text chat, and people can pick that up. Uh, I will also say that the Roll20 voice and video has received uh, numerous um, updates over the past uh, six months, and um, that's actually my group um, that I play with regularly. Uh, we have moved completely over to Roll20 for voice and video. Um, it, we started out in person and uh, before everything happened. And um, now we've we've moved completely to Roll20. At one point we used Discord, but it was too buggy for us uh, from all the different computers. So we use Roll20 completely. But that's, um, as they say, anecdotal. <laughs> yeah, but there have definitely been changes that have made it. I mean, I, I also have, have um, started using it uh, in the Burn Bright game that I was talking about. And there's some very appreciable changes that show you like when someone is still connecting and make it easy to reset a connection and all that kind of thing. It just makes it a lot more pr transparent what's going on. Yeah. And and there is a, um, th those are the things that you can see for sure. The stuff that you can't see, I think is even more um, impactful, but also uh, difficult to see. Uh, so <laughs> we'll go with the uh, we'll with under the hood. answer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a question here from Lance um, about Burn Bright uh, that I'd like to ask James. Um, how do you charge? How do charge mechanics work for weapons? As in, do they require plasma batteries, etc.? Gotcha. Yeah. So this is a, a pretty common question, actually. Um, so their weapons have different qualities. Uh, they do not require ammunition. Um, in Burn Bright, it is science fantasy. So all technology is powered by a magic goo called plasma. Uh, that means like that's inside your laser rifle, right? And powering it. And so essentially your laser rifle uh, is never going to run out of lasers that it can shoot. It can just keep yes. shooting over and over again. That's uh, one of my main complaints about my laser rifle now, like in yeah, real life, seriously. is that I'm always leaving my laser beams at home. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there is a, uh, so each weapon has a different quality, and there's a quality called charge that some weapons have, and it's followed by a number. So like charge three or charge four. Um, and what that means is that weapon does extra damage. It does an extra point of damage when you are rolling that many dice to attack. So this is great because we already talked previously uh, about how combat works and how the complexity of skill checks works. So that's another reason to push your luck because if you have like a charge four, laser rifle, uh, you are going to want to uh, get to a point where you are rolling four dice so that you can be doing extra damage with your laser rifle then. So so that's how that charge quality works in Burn Bright. Cool. Awesome. Um, our next question is from Gargamond, who asks, can you talk about any of the features in development beyond uh, updated dynamic lighting parity and layer up? Uh, yeah, we have um, committed publicly to improvements to text chat and uh, improvements to the page menu. Um, there's going to be some some other stuff for sure that's um, uh, that's going to come out um, at, at various times too. Um, 
some of those are more exciting to to people than others uh and that's not even counting the uh really cool uh, systems and and um published books and things like that that uh that we're going to be uh, integrating on the rural 20 platform as well okay cool um, and Aaron P also asks, what is going on with dynamic lighting, which is the, the thing I was referencing earlier, where now you get to go free, Kenton. Tell us all about updated dynamic lighting. Yeah, so much, so much stuff. Uh, and I'd like to thank Andreas for uh, essentially doing <laughs> doing the work that I uh, set out to do uh, myself uh, for me. Uh, July 7th, we added limits to the field of vision and light as options in the, in the default settings. Um, so those were, uh, you can add, add all those things easier. July 14th, uh, GMs can uh, manually hide and reveal sections of the explore mode. So we were able to get feature parity with uh, legacy dynamic lighting and advanced fog of war uh, now within updated dynamic lighting and explorer mode. Uh, July 21st, uh, first, that's the word, July 21st, uh, toggling between pages, um, kept the polygon tool reveal intact. That was a, a little issue. We didn't have polygons yet in the reveal tool and uh, it took a refresh to get that. So a, a little bug we got there, but then also on July 21st, we added API support for directional vision and light. Um, uh, we're building the API uh, right after it's um, available to use in, in the interface, uh, if not in lockstep with the, the features that we're putting out in that same way. And finally, July 21st, we added the light multiplier, which lets um, you adjust a uh, character's or sorry, a player's view of a token um, that ha that has that extra stuff. It makes sense when we talk about it within the context of a game like Pathfinder. Uh, you know, there are certain um, races that give ability that uh, lets you know uh, a light of a certain distance that it works for everyone else. Uh, go longer for um, certain races because they have uh, more keen vision. And um, this is a, a software um, implementation of that. So uh, yeah. Whew. You're muted, Soraya. Dang it. I didn't live. Yeah. I was going to say, I was saying, so you can be very granular about it. If you like choose to be very granular about it, or you have a system that asks you to be granular about it, you can very much like shift what an individual player. Um, yeah sees through their tokens and it was a uh, pretty pretty good improvement from the way that it was implemented before um, it was kind of r random uh in the way that it would work uh depending on um some some of the implementation i'll i'll sk skim over uh the nitty-gritty details but uh, this way you can always be sure that a player who um, controls a, a token with a multiplier is going to see light at that multiplier cool uh, well then, let me dig into some more burn bright questions. Sure. Um, and you know what? Uh, I, I think we have some burn bright brush questions from chat, and I like to reward the people who show up um, to watch live. So why don't we uh, do some of those? Sure. Okay. Well, let me let me put those. Please switch us over to chat questions. So first one, uh, Cheshire Nine has a burn bright question of. Uh, what was able to be done design-wise with the game being built specifically for a VTT that is unusual or couldn't be done for a pen and paper RPG? That is a great question. So one of the things that's important to know about Burn Bright is we always say that it's optimized for Roll20, right? And it is exclusive to Roll20's platform. But we wanted this idea that like, you could get together around a physical table with, uh, you know, tablets uh, and or or laptops and p still play Burn Bright with all of your friends if you wanted to, right? Um, and it's not so, a video game. It's very right. much a TTRPG. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so a lot of what can be done in Burn Bright, uh, you could do at a table, like you could replicate it, but it's going to be a lot faster and a lot more efficient with Roll20. Um, and so the the big thing that comes to mind is one, um, as you get up there in your complexity, you're rolling a lot of dice and a lot of different kinds of dice very quickly. Uh, and because you can take as many turns as you, like as many actions as you want, basically, on your turn, um, having quick resolution of that is very important for keeping the flow of combat working. Right. Yeah. So that's the first thing is that we have can roll lots of dice and have very fast resolution. In fact, when you roll in roll twenty, it 
in the chat window, it pops up whether you passed or failed immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and how many people great. really have seven D12s? Oh, a lot of us, including Kenton. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. But nevertheless, it would be a pain to get them all together, even if you do happen to be a rabid dice collector. I have them exactly. right here. <laughs> <laughs> Ken's ready to play Burn Bright at any time, any complexity. Exactly, exactly. And and then also when you roll seven, okay, now I've got to line them all up and look for any doubles and that kind of thing, right? So so that's the first one. Um, the the one of the other big things is that uh, maps play a huge huge role in this. So you build a spaceship together in burn bright with your party that's like one of your character creation tasks is after character creation we all build a shape uh, spaceship together our spaceship has a shared character sheet that we can all access at any time which rolled 20 makes a lot easier um and we can keep coming back to that map and we can all work on it and make improvements and you know move things around so again that is a huge huge thing that roll 20 can do and preserve right like a you could probably come together and, and draw out a customizable spaceship map every single time you played if you wanted to at a table, but that's going to be difficult. And we're going to wait, where was our med bay again? Uh, what did we put in the kitchen? Right. All that kind of stuff. So it makes that a lot easier. Um, it also has some pretty nifty safety tools that can be used anonymously at the table. Um, so if people are familiar with the flower uh, safety tool, uh, which is a, a tool where you have a flower that has three different colors on it, green, yellow, and red. Green means, hey, I'm cool with what we're doing right now. When I touch this, it means keep going, we're good. Uh, yellow means, uh, you know, this. I'm a little uncomfortable right now, like please don't go any further and let's wrap this up as quickly as possible. And red is like the X card, that means, please stop and move on and no questions asked. And so we have done that with cards and you simply deal your players a bunch of these different cards and then they can anonymously drop them on the table. And you can say, oh, okay, looks like somebody dropped a red card on the table, let's go. Nobody even knows who did it, mm -hmm. including the GM. Um, so that makes it uh, even easier and, uh, and more reliable that like, if someone's having a problem, they'll probably come forward because they won't be the person who touched the X card, right? It's just, here it right. is. Let's move on. Um, so we have those safety tools in place too. Um, a lot of uh, the combat mechanics and, uh, and the game itself is geared towards like exploring a lot of different maps and places, right? So that's a big part of it. Your spaceship map is a big part of it. And then there is also one instance of a game uh, in the in the game master section where you roll a d81 uh, to generate a random culture and so that that was my like we got to get a weird die size in there that could only be rolled on roll 20 so it's not <laughs> super necessary to the game um and and there are workarounds for it if you were playing it at a physical table but I had to I had to get a like a, a non-conventional die size that's in there funny. because you can do that in roll 20 and that's fun. I remember one of the very first conversations I had with you like when I had just started at roll 20 and you were like 6ish months into development I think on uh Burn Bright um that you were saying like you know one of the things we could do is have 53 sided dice and I was very into it because I was like that sounds cool yeah let's have 53 sided dice I don't know what this guy's on but I'm into it <laughs> <laughs> yes yes uh, the the rest of the design team was a little like we want this to be uh, accessible to people which I think was probably uh, the good call but Soraya there is a D53 version of this game out there that uh, I very much want to create <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, cool uh I want to ask one more question about what inspirations or ideas led to the omniscience in Burn Bright. And that's from uh, Mikao13. I think I'm saying that right. I hope I'm saying that uh, right. Yes, yes. So, uh, so this is a good question. Um, so one of the things that we were talking about in when we started to develop the game uh, was that this is a science fantasy game. And the reason it was a science fantasy game is because like science fiction requires a lot of like research and science fantasy, you can just be like, ah, you know, magic and uh, the force. That's how that works over there, right? Um, and so, uh, so that was one reason we went to science fantasy. But we said, if we're going to do this, we want to lean hard 
into the fantasy genre, right? We don't just want it to be because we're lazy and want to hand wave stuff. We want to, we want to make this like a unique science fantasy experience. And so um, there was this idea of we should have a creature similar to dragons in the setting. Um, and that is where the omniscience came from. And if you look at the art of the omniscience, you can see there's like a little bit of dragon influence in a lot of their art as well. Um, so the idea was like, hey, there are these, you know, these creatures that are very powerful uh, and they were here before we were and there's vestiges of their civilization and, and that kind of thing. Um, and so that is where the idea for the omniscience came from. Uh, was inspired by dragons. As a big dragon fan, I'm down for it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to switch us back to pre-submitted questions. Kent and I are yeah. going to kind of um, try and hustle. Rapid fire? We're going to rapid fire because I want to spend this time talking to James while we have him here. So uh, how many games of Burn Bright have we got going? Um, our staff have five different games. Uh, and uh, we also have the Twitch live stream that I mentioned every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. So I highly recommend checking that out. Great. Uh, second, uh, next one here is from Gray Wolf, uh, which is, the question is, is there an easy way to share? Um, yeah, Gray Wolf added some context saying uh, there are 75 GMs running 227 events online at Gen Con, and many of the events are by different GMs running the same scenario. It'd be great if we had uniform maps, characters, etc. Uh, to do that. Surya, what you got? I, I hear you, Grey Wolf. It's something we've been running into a lot as we've been trying to expand things to support a lot of conventions moving online. Um, I would say that probably the easiest way to go about it is to create multiple copies of the scenario that you're running and invite other GMs to join you as a co-GM for, for those copies. You can copy a game from your game settings menu. Cool. And uh, Lexin and Nolan ask, what are the plans for addressing system lag and basic functionality like uh, AV and dynamic lighting? I talked a little bit about the improvements that we made uh, earlier um, in the stream, uh, but I uh, completely unrelated to this question, I was doing some research and categorizing our, our performance over the quarter and what, what we did, uh, and just came up with these numbers that I think are really impressive, uh, and I'm happy to share. We had 73 tiny um, fixes. Those are like small bugs and text changes on the site, 68 minor, um, which are a, a little bit more than that, but not quite so major, which we had 23 of. Those are like colors for night vision updated uh, for updated dynamic lighting and infrastructural upgrades that have sped up the site, et cetera. And then we had nine, what I called colossal, uh, which are things like uh, the database upgrade um, that, that happened uh, last week and uh, significant infrastructure changes that, we, that we've made. That's since the beginning of the year. Uh, that accelerated in March, April, May, June. Um, Can't imagine why. Which, uh, yeah, well, I'll leave that to, uh, mm. to, the, to the mystery. But um, yeah, uh, all the time. We're doing those all the time. We're always making improvements and uh, we will continue to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just say super impressive? Y you all should be very proud of the work that you are doing because it is a massive, massive undertaking. So thanks so much, James. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you saying that. Let me say that uh, this is um, we want more um, for sure. That's uh, we, we all want uh, more, faster, better um, all the time. So. Bigger, better, faster, stronger. Going to get us <laughs> copyright claimed. Um, no. <laughs> uh, also, by the way, we are $31 away from being able to start a Burn Bright giveaway. So uh, if Ooh. you're in the chat right now, uh, go follow that Tiltify link. Donate. We're only $31 away from somebody in this chat getting a free copy of Burn Bright today. All right. And next question is from Knight of Foltis. Uh, why is the ability to show or hide GM dice rolls not at the system level, but instead left at the character sheet level? That's a really interesting question, and I could probably wax philosophical about it, and I, I don't want to. Um, it's actually made at the role level, right? Like the character sheets themselves produce a macro, which then get put into the text chat, and that creates, that creates the role. Um, the, uh, so within that, right, uh, the character sheet controls what when you click the character sheet, what gets put into there. And that's why it's controlled at the character sheet level. There is a thing called talk to yourself. It's a function within the chat that you can turn on. Um, and all of your roles will be private just to you. It'll it'll process right there. Um, it won't be shared. And so you can do that. The downside of that right now is that it uh, doesn't get saved in like the chat archive. And also you'd have a hard time proving it, you know, without sharing your screen or, or some other I have no what, like screenshot or uh, I don't want to dig into how to do that. What I do want to do is say um, there is a way to do that. I haven't ever seen um, a, a, a question about like a game 
toggle for Whisper, uh, but I'd be interested to see that. Uh, so hop on over to suggestions and ideas and, and post that up and uh, try to get people rally behind it and we'll, um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, Keith Curtis asks, can you talk about any plans for the page menu or any current aspects you would like to improve? No, I can say Keith Curtis is my friend. I hope he would say the same about me, uh, but I do talk to him. Uh, yeah, there are several suggestions that relate to that page menu, including um, copying a page, uh, copying all the assets and layers, et cetera, uh, organization, making that better um, so that you don't don't you aren't shown the entire entirety of all the all the pages within a game uh, you can navigate between limiting that view to just the thing that you want to see and a more effective layout um, you know right now it's just that one thing with a horizontal scroll and that doesn't work for a lot of people we would change that and also um, there's a lot of a, a lot more changes that are happening in smaller ways more incrementally rather than the big fire hose type things where uh, we put everything out at once um, so expect to see these come out uh, over over time and not all at once all right uh yeah uh do you want to go into pathfinder and and uh, wizards of the coast type questions Soraya? yes uh do cool. you know who asked this next question kenton uh me <laughs> 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 it says you yes you i don't remember this but i've been getting really good sleep uh, with the uh, nighttime meditation app so it's possible that the, i i in fact did ask Maybe this you. question so i'll, I'll take it uh, let's actually say this is an anonymous user and so chat can name them because it wasn't me uh so chat feel free hop hop in there uh, are there any plans uh to at least make the core rulebook compendium for pathfinder second edition free uh, no, we're not going to be making the the Pathfinder Second Edition core book core rulebook free. Uh, there's additional development and integration that's available with purchase. It's a huge time saver, and that's uh, why we why we sell it. Um, Paizo has made their own free repository of rules that can be accessed via the web and entered into your character sheets, but uh, it will not be free on Roll Twenty. Cool. Uh, I do want to say it looks like we got um, we hit the giveaway. So uh, oh sweet, we raised a hundred dollars for. Thanks, Code 2040. Everybody. And so uh, the mods are taking care of the giveaway in chat right now. Uh, the other question I have of uh, is, do you get tired of being asked about the Sword Coast Adventures Guide and the DMG? Also, when are they coming? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> but it, it seems like the care is a little bit disingenuous in that one from a Dodo and an old GM. I don't know which one of those two people put um, the, the end on there. But, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> While, yes, I, I, I do get tired of answering it every month, at the same time, I understand why people are interested in it, right? Yeah. We're very close to catalog completion on these. It's very exciting to have all of the all of the D&D &D resources at your fingertips. And the answer is at the end of the year, we'll have them all. 2020. Uh, 2020. Uh, Masters 8 asks, is mass import or export for character sheets uh, to or from the vault on the way? And we're in um. definite bullet mode. Yeah, got bullet a mode. Way uh, to live too. Uh, on the on the way, um, probably not in the near term. That's that's bullet mode answer. Sorry, I couldn't give you more. Sorry. Uh, they also ask: Are there plans to allow exports of character sheets to PDF? Uh, vicariously, we are working on uh, printing character sheets, and we have the work identified that needs to be in there. We need to schedule it and prioritize it, et cetera. And at that point, um, most operating systems will, will be able to generate a PDF instead of print it to a printer, and that'll be the best way to handle it. So that's uh, there. That is. Okay. So plans in place, not in action. Yep. Uh, Findersky asks, now that the custom sheet sandbox is available, how about opening that up so everyone can get more sheet authors who aren't pros involved? Uh, that's uh, an excellent idea. We, we love um, making uh, sheet authors, uh, we love helping sheet authors in that way. One of the issues that we have to deal with is um, service and sheet, uh, the custom sheet sandbox is one of the more complicated things. And um, when people need support with that, that, that costs actual real hard dollars in a way that most of our software doesn't. And so that's why it remains a pro feature right now. Not opposed to doing that in the future, but uh, at this point, the data is uh, pointing us to, um, it has real costs associated with it. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, compendium and module questions. First up from Richard, uh, when are you going to correct the cleric druid spell selection? Um, well, we made some changes from the way those uh, operate in D&D for basically technical reasons, the most practical of which is to cut down on sheet lag. Every spell is stored code on your sheet. So if you have the um, correct setup of 
every spell is available, uh, then it lags your sheet tremendously. So instead, what you what we hope you will look at your sheet as is a way to drag your favorite spells onto there. Uh, and if you choose to upload every single spell, like drag and drop every single spell that to have them on your sheet, that's fine too. But uh, the reason that it's not the sheet is not built that way is because of sheet lag. Boink. Bramble uh, wants to know, is there uh, any way to enable the Empire of the Ghouls campaign intended tokens from the materials I have purchased? Um, that is a Kobold Press uh, release, and they can only use the assets that they own for products. So the problem here that this person is running into is there are some monsters that are based on, let's say, something in the... Um, uh, forgetting the name of it right now because lightning mode but anyway there are monsters that are D, D monsters with official D, D art and even if you own that D, D art you will get kobold press's art it's good art um <laughs> you can manually bring over your monster manual you can manually bring over your monster manual tokens but the reason that it's not the default is that uh because kobold press is publishing it they can only use stuff that they own so they create new art for you to enjoy hopefully you like it maybe you don't I like it. Um, Max. Uh, do you want to go? You want to do? You want to do more pre-submitted? Do you want to do some live ones? We're uh, time crunch with eight minutes left. Ooh, let's do some live ones. I think chat deserves deserves that. Um, I agree. Okay. Support chat at all costs. Support chat. All right, chat. Uh, what have you got for me, Kenton? So bullet mode, uh, solar swordsman. I think I know him. Uh, which species in Burn Bright is your favorite, or which is the first character you made? Um, I made the bees one. What's the hive? Oh, the Rornin. Yes. Rornin. Yes. Yeah, that was yes. mine. <laughs> James, how about you? Uh, I also am a uh, am a Rornin uh, fan. So th those are my baby for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I love those Dang so it. much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rornin. Uh, I did, oh but gosh. it's not the first character I made. I've actually never played one. I've played um, uh, Ul, Ul. I'm blanking on the name, James. Ulrun. Ulrun. Uh, Ulrun. Ulrun, and I'm currently playing a Driftling. But I, I freaking yes. love the Space Beetles. Yes. All right. Next one. Uh, next one. Uh, when I try to convince uh, my friends to play Burn Bright, what similar sci-fi or RPG touch points would be relevant to pique their interests? Uh, so I always say it's like Marvel sci-fi, like Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. uh, Thor, um, you know, it's sort of that very fantastical science uh, fiction with a lot of magic uh, or Space like mysterious. Space superhero. Forces. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Chat, by the way, cool. is shouting their favorite species at us and not a single one of them agrees with our, like, <laughs> <laughs> like this, this group is all Rornin, but the chat is like, Peacecraft, Glean, Magic Rock people. <laughs> are we a hive mind then? Yeah. Oh, oh see myself we out. are oh, one oh. Rornin. I love it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I know, I know, it just came out, but any plans for new races for Burn Bright, like maybe the key? <laughs> uh that is a great question uh so uh we do have more coming for burn bright i don't know that we have necessarily species on the docket uh but we do have more content coming so i would say tell all your friends to buy burn bright and then roll 20 will have no choice but to continue supporting it yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go there you go force us <laughs> no please seriously force us i want more of this stuff <laughs> Uh, last one on Burn Bright from chat uh, right now. Are there plans to add some additional insight for Burn Bright GMs to help with balancing combats, making new NPCs, or making custom ships? The math for keeping them balanced isn't immediately obvious. Um, sounds like the answer to that is yes, based on the previous question. Yep. Answer. Questions mm -hmm. answer. Cool. Sweet. Where do you want to go from here, Surya? Um, let's go back into pre-sub okay. uh, questions, uh, and we'll, we'll rattle through. Um, Max wants to know what's the update on copying folders with the transmogrifier. No date yet. We know uh, we know it's a thing we want to do. Um, we're working on speeding up so we can get to all these questions, uh, all these uh, necessary features. Mm -hmm. uh, Pandora asks any update on making certain topics seen by certain players and linking map items to handouts. Uh, it, it, no, no update right now. Um, but uh, those are those are real things. We definitely want to see. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> searching there, there are suggestions to go vote for. Uh, yes. you, you, you can definitely vote it for that. It came up in the last have. round table, and I expressed my personal support for that. Yep. Um, searching to stay on Roll20 asks, what is being done to complete obstructed items in suggestions and improvements form? Is there a time frame for completion or cancellation? Uh, that it, there, there is no um, 
public time frame right now, but as I mentioned before, all the all the stuff that we've done been doing, a lot of the infrastructure work, the stuff behind the scenes to make sure that Roll20 kept working has been accomplished. We've accomplished a lot of that. And so we get to move on to more fun work like features and uh, things like that. Okay. And Findersky asks, is the bug reports and technical issues forum monitored by any Roll20 staff? Um, I would say yeah. uh, there are... There are some heavy asks being made of <laughs> Roll20's customer support at this moment. We are monitoring them. Um, the reason this question comes up is that like, normally we're very active in the bug forums and responding and suggesting things and yada yada. And we haven't been able to do that because time is at such a crunch that basically what we're doing is we're looking at that forum every single day, um, taking notes on the things that we see. Um, but we aren't necessarily able to go in and give that um, that hand holding, um, that's in a good way, uh, that supportive uh, walkthrough of like, yes, you know, we as staff have done this thing just because of the time crunch and because there are so many tickets that are waiting on us. So customer support's doing their best. Um, they're doing a lot of good work and we will catch up and get back in there in a more visible way as soon as we can. Uh, there is excellent community support as well. Um, yes. That's what Rule20 was founded on uh, in, in uh, interesting way the community rallied around the tool and uh, helped support that so uh, it doesn't require a Roll20 employee all the time uh, but definitely yeah what Soraya said too yeah we want to we want to support you in all the ways but right now we're we're doing our best <laughs> um, all right I think we've got two more chat questions three more chat questions uh, which I think we can sneak in and then yeah. let's run the runaway or run the giveaway shall we Let's do it. All right. So everyone in chat, if you haven't yet entered the giveaway and you want to, now is your time to do it before we answer these three remaining questions. All right. No more new questions, though. Limit. Um, Cheshire9 asks, uh, follow up on the integration questions. Um, will there be integration with Hero Lab online to import Hero Lab character data into Roll20 character sheets? Uh there are no plans, no current plans to do that right now. Okay. Uh, that's not a that's not a no. That's just a not right now. Okay. Um, uh, a <laughs> I love this, James. This is a question for you uh, from Sir Sir Manzalot. Uh, question about Burn Bright. I love them, but why so many bugs? <laughs> now, I'll, uh, I'll just say real quick that when i first read that question i was like bugs what bugs oh bugs right <laughs> <laughs> yeah you you're, you're giving uh kenton a, a heart attack over here um so uh yes one reason is because uh the design team is weird we're all a bunch of weirdos who love bugs um you might notice darcy ross who's also in the actual play uh she is like a slug scientist um so she has a, a big thing for for bugs um so yeah i think that's just uh yeah. we're fascinated by them and that's Darcy's how up. twitter handle like uh, imperator gastropoda or something which is like that's Emperor correct slug <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly so um so yeah a lot of a lot of big fans of of bugs on the team um i particularly love swarms uh and that's where the Ronin came from <laughs> the Ronin are just so cool one of the one of the people in my game uh had this uh, they're they're worn in just like kind of dispersed, but they're wearing a coat. So instead of like trying to be a human esque body running around, they were just like, oh, I'm sneaking. Drop all the bugs low on the floor. Mm -hmm. They kind of carry the coats on their backs and they sneak under this like <laughs> be behind this this blocker. Like it is so the things you can do when your body is bugs. I'm just saying I'm very into it, and that is why I'm so enthusiastic about Rornin and so not able to bring myself to play one because I'm like it's too cool. I can't wrap my head around it. Anyway, <laughs> bugs. Um, the third question was actually answered in, in chat. So I, I'll just repeat it since I did promise three questions and then we'll do the runaway. Giveaway, I keep saying that. <laughs> Zathos of Varicia wanted to know if the slithering for um, Pathfinder Society 2 or is that Pathfinder Edition 2? I'll take your word I think for it's it. Pathfinder 2nd Edition. It's Pathfinder 2nd Edition, that's what that means. Okay, uh, is it going to be released on July 30th on Roll20? And I believe the answer is yes, because all of our Pathfinder um, 2 Adventure Paths are coming out day and date with uh, the date they, that they come out elsewhere. Giveaway time! All right, mods in chat, can you run me that giveaway and let's find out who gets a free copy of Burn Bright today? 
Is that well, a drum roll? Yeah, no, that's my attempt. No, it's not a drum roll. I, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I played drums at one point, and I'm just very disappointed in that I drum roll. I did it with my face, and I'm not a beatboxer, all right? <laughs> Give me a break. I did it with my face. <laughs> we could show off. Uh, oh, no, we won. We had somebody win. Evil Squeegee in the chat uh, won a free copy of Burn Bright. So congratulations, right. Evil Evil Squeegee. Our mods will follow up with you and make it so <laughs> so you can get your copy. My friend thought that the drum roll was somebody knocking on the door and we do <laughs> traditionally end these with a look at animals so uh here here she is very upset that someone knocked on the door and i understand james has a, a friend for us too Woo! hey everybody this is lilo say Can hi get lilo. lilo a little higher for us yes there we go. Woo. hi lilo go. oh my gosh that face Lilo's like, put me down, please. Yes, yeah, very much so. Also, there's a thunderstorm here right now, so uh, she's freaking out. Not, not her, not her favorite thing. Yeah, no, I. Get no. That. You didn't have to reach far, uh, <laughs> so I figure, yeah, uh, cal calm lap of James. Uh, exactly. Lilo. <laughs> um, so, all right, let me fix my camera, and we have one more question that we will end everything on, um, and this is a question from Bramble. <laughs> is roll twenty? actually cake <laughs> yes roll 20 is everything cake. is right yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us everyone uh thank you james especially for joining us to talk about burnt bright there are lots of cool things about the system that we did not get a chance to address so i highly recommend going to the gen con panel mentioned earlier james do you do you remember offhand uh when that is again uh, it is, of course, on Friday. I think I want to say it's at 2 p.m. Eastern time or 11 a.m. Pacific. Okay. Gotcha. Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Can confirm. Great. Boom. Thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot. Just didn't have the information no, at my okay. fingertips. <laughs> um, so from all of us and from Roll20, which is cake, thank you and have good weeks and play Burn Bright. It's pretty awesome. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you.